there you okay, go. Okay, here we go. Uh, thank you for those who are still connected with us. I'm Angelica Guerrero. I'm the director of a family, a small family childcare uh, facility. I have been providing uh, services for working families for 15 years. I'm here to share with you only three main problem problematics or challenges that we are facing with the new regulations um, and ways to solve it. And the ways are very simple as long as we can secure some allocation of funding. I'm going to share with you my screen. Um, and with that saying, there you go. Um, I want to I wanna show you how a small family childcare looks like in the daily life. Can you see the screen? You just need to confirm with everybody. Are we, are we seeing the screen? Thank you. Yeah. So this is one of our main challenges. Usually small family childcare will rely in one large room to have the children navigate in and out uh, to play and do activities. With the new regulations, we need to keep the, the, the groups smaller. That means we need to break most of the groups in half. For that, we will need some room dividers to solve the, flu the, the transit of the children. As you can see in this new picture, look how close the kids actually tend to play. That's a natural part of the development because we are social beings. We don't want to sacrifice this part of the development from the children, but we will help them. We can help them by creating see-through small uh, room dividers that are not that expensive but necessary to make sure we control the spread of the germs in case somebody's knees doesn't get to the other half of the group. Um, and the small, the small dividers can be, in this case, for example, this is my facility, can be just added in the middle and high enough to make sure the droplets won't fly too far. And with that, we will comply with the distancing by keeping small play groups divided in different, kind, in different rooms. Uh, one facility of uh, uh, small family childcare homes from, uh, out of our homes and where we share the space also with our families. This is the kitchen, this is the table, and how we use the kitchen, watch this. Um, we have activities, meal times, and sensor integration um, routines or, or, or um, um, activities that are run in our daily life in a small time. Uh, and we have to disinfect and, and sanitize every time we use it. Look how close is the sink here. Can you see that? Well, normally we will say that let's keep, don't wash the dishes until the kids are gone. At this point, because we're gonna need to break our teachers, usually a family childcare has one teacher, maybe one assistant if we are fancy. Now we have to have an assistant. We cannot rely on parents volunteering and coming and do chores with us anymore. We will have to have an assistant and we will have to sanitize and clean these toys. We cannot keep them there just laying around and waiting for somebody to come and do it. We cannot put them in the bathroom because we need the bathroom. So we need a place that is safe to prevent any germs flying around in our counters or on the floor. That can be sold very easily. How? We just need a simple washer, a dishwasher. We don't have this washer. We just need a simple dishwasher that is not expensive, but very much necessary to make sure the sanitation takes place and we can put all those jockey toys that somebody put in the mouth right there without compromising the well-being of the children and the uh, child development appropriate practice. We cannot scare the kids about germs all the time. All we need to do is to put a dirty toy on the top and then put it back on a dishwasher and problem solved. What happened in our yards? Well, we have gardens that are separate in different stations right? Climbing station, activity station, maybe some sensor integration stations, and the kids are going to spend more time there, and we need to rotate them. And everything looks perfect and ready to go, right? We're missing one important thing. We're missing a sink. We need to sanitize and wash those hands. We need to make sure we can sanitize those toys. And we need to make sure the droplets don't fly around the kids who are playing in the area. How do we solve that? Simple. 
a dip, uh, uh, one of those things that are very deep in the, the little bucket there with running water uh, and, and a, an appropriate um, drain to make sure we dispose the water and all those germs get flashed and well goodbye. It will be great to have also an outside party, why not? It's not that expensive and it will save everybody's time and lives for sure because we will be able to attend the population, make sure we contain the spread of the germs because Family childcare, small family childcare is already serving a small amount of people. That means if there is an outbreak in a facility, everybody, the spread is content. In, 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 unlike a, a large uh, facility or a program which you have 70 families, you have an outbreak and you face a massive problem, which is something that is being also uh, created policies to solve it. But look at the benefits of the uh, small family childcare force we already a small amount of people controlling the spread of the germ. And with the minimum investment, all these facilities can run to provide the, the same quality, the, the same quality we promised for child development, uh, 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 for the well-being of the children to have, but also sanitation and healthy appropriate practice. This is how we used to do it without a sink. We just have buckets and tops and we wash our hands and we wash our toys. Guess what? That's not safe anymore because these virus we fight in, it's immensely contagious. The droplets can really affect the child so we can no longer afford to have a little droplet spread here or there. We need to make sure we contain all of that with three simple basic ways to solve it dishwasher, an outside sink, and room dividers. I'm sure all of us are facing more than those challenges, like maybe uh, hand-free uh, uh, hand sanitizer dispensers, etc. But the main part of the infrastructure that needs to be up to date for everyone, it's, I will say these three and maybe more, but it's not, doesn't need much funding, but it needs to keep the funding. Whatever promise was made to keep the funding for us to help us um, um, make these adjustments is very important. What happened to us these last months? Everybody said it already. We lost tuition, we lost deposits, we don't have income to actually keep the, the units open. Now, I'm telling you, small family childcare providers already help to contain the spread of the virus because we serve a small population. If many of us start closing, what's gonna happen with the reopening of the economy? Who is going to attend the education and well being of the children? If we do that only in large, programs, let me tell you, with one outbreak, you have 70 families out of childcare and 70 uh, families, working families who will have to shelter in place. But you have an outbreak in a small family childcare with up to 10 ch children and it's up to 10 working families out of the workforce. That means we're securing 60 other working families to continue being in the workforce. Now for that, we're gonna prevent the, or even those 10 families get that problem done by just securing and, pro and providing the necessary funding for the basic infrastructure that we needed to solve and continue uh, um, uh, working and facilitating uh, the care for the children for our, our city. This is San Francisco. Thank you very much. I don't want to take more of your Thank time. Thank you so much.